that night was the Department of Commerce's military compatibility meeting in Oak Harbor. They had two meetings. Um, none of us could attend the Coopville meeting because they scheduled it on the same night as the council meeting. I understand there was over a hundred people at the Coopville meeting. Um, and it went pretty much as I would have expected it to and how I told the Department of Commerce it was probably going to go. Um, no one in the, no, of, none of the hundred people wanted to talk about the military compatibility guidebook, which is what the Department of Commerce was there to talk about. Um, however, I also heard that our community was very well educated, very well spoken, and very respectful during our Coopville meeting. And so at the Oak Harbor meeting, the majority of the people at the meeting were Department of Commerce staff or Oak Harbor City staff. There was very few, <coughs> I, honestly, I think there was four people from the city of Oak Harbor. And there was more people there from Coopville than there were from Oak Harbor. And so um, it, it went okay. Um, the people from Coopville that were all there spoke again about their concerns about military compatibility guidebook and what was that really going to end up as was it the beginning of regulation or um, land use restrictions and so um, but the Department of Commerce has to go through a public process for their guidebook and now they can say they did that for our area um, uh, I attended the Sound Defense Alliance's community meeting in the high school over 200 people showed up for that meeting. Um, again, it was a really, really well-run meeting. Those community groups that do the community meetings in our in our town do a really good job. Um, the purpose of this meeting was to speak about getting ready for the record of decision from the Navy and what and and what their plan is for after that, after the record of decision. So it's my opinion and impression that just because the record of decision is signed that they will not stop with their um, advocating for less flights in the Central Woodby area. How they go about do that, doing that, I don't think that they have fully decided. And again, the Sound Defense Alliance is an alliance of about 30 different groups from Central Woodby, Olympic Peninsula, La Conner, Anacortes, San Juans. It's a large group of um, community activists. Um, okay, so a follow-up to our meeting, our last meeting, when uh, we declined to approve the Navy's Section 106 mitigation MOU, and so did the Trust Board. Um, as, a, as a result of that, the state ACA, AC, yes, tell me what that stands for, ACA, Historic Preservation, something Commission on Historic Preservation, um, they declined to sign it also. And they, um, so it got kicked up to the National Board, which we all knew it would. Um, our state board said the same things that we said, that uh, the mitigation was not appropriate mitigation, it wasn't enough mitigation. Um, so kind of what's happening, from what we can tell, at about 3.30 this afternoon I got an email from Captain Arnie. The Navy is upping their offer to a million dollars of mitigation from, from $500,000 to a million dollars of mitigation strictly for the ferry house. Um, nothing else, nothing else that anybody has advocated for. Um, it was kind of just like an uh, FYI memo. They're not, we were copied on it. They're not negotiating with the town. They're not negotiating with the trust board. They're not negotiating with any of the other consulting parties except the National Park Service, of course. Um, that just happened this afternoon. I don't know what the State Department, Historic Preservation Department, I don't know what their response to that will be. Um, I have a feeling that the National Advisory Board will sign that. But I, that's just a feeling, I don't know. So we, we're just waiting to see what happens. With that. Did, 
did the county and the park service sign it? The county did not sign it, um, and the park <coughs> service. Well, as a result of the trust board and the town and the county not signing it, signing it, and so therefore the state the office of historic preservation didn't sign it. Then they didn't stop and ask anybody to sign it. At that point, they decided to try and go back and make the state department okay. figure out something that the state would would sign, and not have to go to the national historic advisory council. Um, the Navy is working on self-imposed deadlines. Their their deadline now is this Friday at five o'clock. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Deadline for what? For, for the state to sign it. For the state office to sign it. You know, I told you before that the town, the county, the trust board, core, we are all just consulting parties. Our signatures are required. So that's that what that's what happened this afternoon. Haven't really had a chance to talk to anybody about it since I saw that saw that email. Okay. Um, but I just want to report that Congressman Larson continues to strongly advocate for us um, with the Secretary of the Navy. He um, originally sent a letter to the Secretary of the Navy asking eight very specific questions and, and asking for eight things. The Secretary of the Navy responded back no eight times. So this week, um, Congressman Larson sent two different letters to the Secretary of the Navy. I should have, I will forward them to you. You would just find them interesting. Um, one of them, before he had mixed up, in his first letter he mixed up EIS issues and Section 106 issues. This time he wrote two separate letters. So he wrote an EIS letter strongly advocating for some of the things that were in his first letter. And in his Section 106 letter, he um, said that he supported the community ask. He wanted um, funding for the Ferry House and the Coopville Wharf. He put a dollar amount on it, which he'd never done before. He asked for $2 million for each of those projects. Um, and I, I believe, okay, so this is Tuesday. I got a copy of those letters late last week, so I don't believe he's heard anything back from the Secretary of the Navy. But he continues to be really, you know, not, not taking no for an answer, and he apparently is going to advocate for us right up until the record of decision. That's all the Navy stuff I have. Does anybody have any questions on the Navy stuff? Okay. Um.